Hello everyone and welcome to part 5 of my 18 part series where I will be reading passages from my autobiography, Odd Man Out, True Stories of a Gay Black Swimmer. And before I get to today's reading, I just want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart who have purchased copies of my book since I started this series, oh I guess it would be about two weeks ago. And uh, it's just been tremendous to know that what I've been doing has actually reached its goal, which is to bring the message of this book to a wider audience than I would have been able to uh, get to up without YouTube. So thanks to all of you who have bought the book, and um, I'll mention this again at the end of the video, but if you'd like to buy a copy, there's a link down in the description box to uh, buy a signed copy for just $15.99 through December 31st. And after December 31st, if you're watching this after then, it'll be $20, but still a pretty good deal. Now, if you haven't seen parts one, two, three, or four, um, I'm running out of space on this video box here. So uh, I'm gonna ask you to just go to the description box, box below and just find the links to parts one through four there. Now, the second announcement is uh, after I had posted part four and had actually watched it again, I realized I was actually reading from chapter four when I was supposed to be reading from chapter three. So instead of deleting that one and just reposting it, I thought for part five, I will read from chapter three. And chapter three details my life from when I was 14 to about uh, just when I had turned 17. And uh, one of the biggest uh, moments of my life in those three years was at the U.S. Olympic Festival, which is a competition that's no longer held, uh, which in the sport of swimming was designed to uh, kind of foster competition and, and find the newest young athletes in the sport of swimming. You couldn't be an Olympian and you could not be uh, a member of any USA Swimming national team uh, when you were selected for the Olympic Festival which didn't include the junior team, which I had been a part of the winter before. So this meet was pretty much uh, a chance for a lot of young athletes to really show who they are and just a chance to compete with um, kids their own age, which I really enjoyed. So I got picked for this meet in 1990, and um, this details what happened to me on the first night of swimming. I won the gold medal in the 100 breast on the first day and helped my team win the 400 medley relay. I had confidence I could win the 100 breast, but I also wanted to break the meet record of 104.20. Since I was putting in a slight taper for the meet, I figured I could surpass that time. I wasn't disappointed that I went 400 slower than the record since I won the race. I also got a bronze medal in the 200 breast, a big surprise given my inexperience in swimming the event at the national level and the fact that many of the swimmers I raced had swum it at the national championships, whereas I was still a few seconds away from making the cut. That medal might have been handed to me simply because I rested for the meet and a few others that could have easily beaten me did not. The awards presentation was very similar to what you see in the Olympics, and the medals were big. The goal was to give young people a taste of the Olympic experience, and we got it. If you won a race, you were escorted to the media room for interviews with newspaper and TV journalists. I had done a few interviews before, but never in front of a dozen reporters. It was strange to be in control of who asked questions. I got asked some of the general questions. Would you describe your race? How did you feel about your time? What did you think of the meet? But a reporter asked me something that made me think. Would you describe your... What do you think about being the first black swimmer to win a gold medal at the Olympic Festival? I thought he had made some mistake. Surely another black swimmer has won a gold medal at this meet. It's been around for years. There were other black swimmers at this meet. Previous meets had had to have had a black swimmer crowned champion. Even if what the guy was saying was true, I didn't think I had made any major statement with my swim, and certainly not one that warranted a question in a press conference. I had been climbing up the ranks of the swimming elite for two years and never did I think about the fact that I was the only black swimmer in the finals of a major race. I just wanted to swim. Anthony Nesty probably did the same thing on his way to winning the gold medal in the Hunter Butterfly at the 1988 Olympics. Also, remember that I had grown up on teams that were made of black swimmers. 
we were never made to think that making a national team or winning a gold medal at a major meet was something we have to, to prove to the white man. My coaches never made declarations that they wanted one of us to be the first black swimmer to win a national title. If it happened, it happened because I was a good swimmer. It seemed like an eternity before I could find the answer to the reporter's question. I never thought about it until now, but I hope it inspires black people to take up swimming and know they can do it too. The next day, the story of my historic win was in newspapers across the country. Friends and relatives sent copies of it to our home from their hometowns. So that's a reading from chapter three of my book, Odd Man Out, True Stories of a Gay Black Swimmer, and I hope you have enjoyed what you read. And again, if you'd like to get a signed copy of the book, just go to the description box below and you'll find a link to get one. Uh, thanks again for allowing me, as always, to share my book with you, and I look forward to seeing you next time.